third, her personal Sabbath every Monday. So just a reminder, it's been put on. Oh, yeah. It's so going to be changed. Yeah. Now that Russell's done with school, I don't have to take uh, Fridays. Um, and Mondays is technically the usual pastor's day, mm -hmm. so we just decided to make it easier. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. All right. December 12th. Um, that will be 11.30, lunch at George's, following at 2 o'clock to the senior citizens, um, home for mission. So anyone that would like to join, come on out. Um, Wednesday, the 14th and the 21st, a uh, reminder, no more, no um, prayer meeting or Bible study. Uh, we're still in the Holy Club. Uh, that is on 101, class 101, um, with uh, Reverend Pate, but we're going to skip the next two Wednesdays. Do you want to talk about love or just... Okay. Alright, December 18th is Ornament Exchange Day, so uh, please bring your ornaments in. Some people have already put them on the back row out there, um, but bring it in. We'll do an exchange, and that will be your prayer partner for the year. So if you have any questions, just see me after church. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and bring it wrapped, but with your name somewhere in there so that when it's open, they know who the car partner is. Um, it's December 21st uh, at 7 o'clock, it's the Blue Christmas Service at Tabernacle, um, Reverend Page Church. So he has welcomed us all to come join that, and I heard it's a really special. It really, it really is. And if anybody, you know, doesn't know where it's at or, you know, would like to ride, just let me know. It's a wonderful, a wonderful service. All right, December 24th, Christmas Eve, 6 o'clock service and light service. Beautiful, one of my favorite things of the year. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then, it's so hard to say this, but Saturday, Saturday January 6th, <laughs> Friday, 23. At 6 to 8, um, the pastor's residence, uh, she's having an open house, and she lives in council, and she's welcomed everyone to come and visit her. Mm -hmm. Any other business? I kind of have an announcement I want to make. I, I think all the paperwork processing for the disaffiliation is finally done. Yay! I went through with a fine tooth comb, and believe it or not, I actually found two things they added in that wasn't there when I started it off, but I caught that up yesterday, and as far as I can tell, we're just waiting right now that everything else is satisfied, but I'm wait waiting for them to confirm that. Well, and just to add to that, too, all any fees that are associated with that have now all been paid. Yes. Um, and cleared, except for one last check, which I'm hoping will clear on Monday. Um, and then, um, so we're, we're gonna start looking at opening another checking account with the new church's name within the next mm -hmm. couple of weeks. So we're starting off fresh. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. Julia, maybe you have something? I do. I do. I'm so excited. So many of you helped with the yard sale preparation with Elizabeth and I. I, mean, I, thought, I, I didn't have the right idea, but I did. And then um, pretty much everybody in the church came out to help with the yard sale and our total for the yard sale was nine hundred twenty-eight dollars and twenty-five cents. Not as good. So we have the I mean, it's wonderful. But, uh, so we have maybe ten boxes left, and the parsonage is already set up. Um, so I need to talk to you afterwards because we hear that Zion United Methodist Church has a thrift store. They do, and they're taking donations. They're taking donations. We have to go up to uh, Richard Booker. I think we'll do I that. know. And the youth evidently are really involved in this um, sale that they have. Absolutely. And so, you know, it benefits, it, it just continues to keep on giving, and so that's what we want to do. We want to mm -hmm. do something, and if they can take it, we can get it over to them and uh, let them Makes money off of it and help their new services. So, yes, we are glad. We also have um, a joyous time of wrapping the gifts um, for the families, and that's going to be a, a definite thing that is going to be a blessing. Yeah, and that's right after church today. It is. Um, so, we're all going to stay after and get those presents wrapped up. And Julie's already planning when she's going to put them in her car and deliver them. So, we're 
getting there. All right, thank you. Thank you for that, Tina. As we begin to center our silos for our time of worship, will you please bow in prayer with me this morning? The Advent story is filled with hope and mystery, anticipation and preparation, a kingdom of this world, and one yet to be. Heaven coming down to touch the earth, the footsteps of the divine walking dusty roads as once they did in Eden, and a people searching for a savior, walking to the stable. Open our eyes and hearts that this might be an advent of hope to the world in darkness. All the people said, Amen. 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 Our call to worship this morning is Jesus Loves Me on page 191. Please stand as you're able and let us join our voices. was to put the symbol of a fish 
on a door post from door to door. Because the fish was also used in some pagan religions, it would, a lot of animals were. So it was kind of like covert. Other Christians would recognize it. So it would look like this. Now you notice this writing in the middle of this fiction, even in the one that we have on our tree. Unusual writing. Well, those are Greek letters, not Latin. Greek was the scholarly language of the time of Jesus and the apostles. It's actually the language that the Bible was written in. The New Testament was written in this form of Old Greek known as Koine Greek. Well, the word you see in the middle, when I was a kid, I always thought it said Jesus. I thought, well, that's a lot of Greek. That would be the name of Jesus. Isn't that the it. answer for everything? I know. Jesus. I was, well, yeah, and I thought, well, I heard people call it the Jesus fish. So what do you think logically that word in the middle there would be Jesus? But just in Greek. Well, it's not. You know what the word is? It's fish. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally the word fish. And Greek, the word fish is ichthus. And ichthus is an anagram. Now in Holy Club, we just covered a couple of anagrams. When you have a word, each one of those letters of that word means something else, a reminder, like we use the word rest, R-E-S-T, for the Wesleyan quadrilateral. Uh, we just spoke about the word chula in reference to Calvinism, five points of Calvinism that we mostly disagree with. Uh, but this is, <laughs> you know, but this is it. So the letters are iota, chi, theta, epsilon, and sigma. Okay. Iota, chi, theta, Epsilon and Sigma. And each one of these stands for a word. Jesus Christos, uh, Theo, Theo Hios, Soter. Jesus Christos, Theo Hios, Soter. Theo Hios means God's Son or Son of God. And so that's how they would do this, and they would be able to identify each other as Christians. It means Jesus Christ, our Son and Savior. That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So next time you see a fish on the back of a truck or car or hanging on a tree, you know that it means fish. But it means Jesus Christ, God's Son and Savior. And here's our exodus. Thank you, Bethany. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, that is absolutely true. So if you came across and you would draw the one part, and the Christian would know to draw the other part. And so for the uh, for the pagans, this is also the fish was also a symbol of fertility, and so they wouldn't think too much of it if they would see it on the house. They probably assume that they were going to have children or something. But that's that is true. That's one thing they would do to identify with the other. Awesome. Once again, it's good to know the backstory of things so that you understand why they're so significant in the history of Christianity and where we are now. Thank you, Dusty, You're for, welcome. for bringing us those words. And now we will have um, our third, it is in your bulletin as the second, but it is the third as a candle reading this morning, The Joy of Faith, and we have our very own. Howard and Julie Brown bringing that for us. Israel said that the Lord spoke to the king and said, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as show or high as heaven. But when the king refused, God would not be stopped. Therefore, the Lord himself will send you a sign. Lord, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God wants us to know even when we aren't sure of ourselves. God wants to, us to experience his presence even when we think we can handle life on our own. God sends his signs, his presence with us. All we need to do is keep our eyes open and look. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, 
and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Jesus awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she were, had born a son, and he named him Jesus. We light these candles, the candle of faithful hope, of proclaimed peace, of deep everlasting joy. No, no, no. The pink. The pink one. <laughs> no, you're fine. It seems odd to, to do that and not plant all the purple, but yeah. Today, his presence speaks to us of love as a sign that no matter our circumstances, we know that we are not alone. I'm sorry, I did not mean to interrupt. <laughs> I'd rather do that for you. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Julie, for that beautiful reading. So once again, as we continue with um, the story <clears throat> of what the Christmas season means, if you will now all turn to me, uh, turn with me, not turn to me, but turn with me to page 858 this morning in your hymn books, we will have our Psalter reading this morning. <coughs> And this will be in call and response with Psalms 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all my soul. I will, I will praise, praise the Lord, Lord as long as, as I live, live. And, and I will sing praises to my God while I have peace. Put not your trust in princes and mortals in whom there is no help. Their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the Lord God of Jacob. Those who is in the Lord their God. Who make heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Who keep faith forever. Who executes justice for the oppressed. Who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. And the Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord, the Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. And upholds the widow and the orphan. But the Lord brings the way of the wicked to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in <coughs> this is a time where we start to remember that we are Christians. Yes, we are. And as we learned in uh, our Wesleyan 101 class, we do strive for perfection, but we are sinful beings. And therefore, we must confess before God our sins that we can be made right with God. Please, if you will, join me in our prayer of uh, confession this morning, printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, with penitent hearts, we confess that we have too often forgotten whose we are and what we are. Sometimes we live lives as if there is no God, causing us to fall short of being a compelling witness for these things we ask your goodness. Grant to us your strength with clear minds and open hearts, so we may testify about you and our world. Hold us to you and build our relationship with you and with those you have given us.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, the promise is true. The Lord God loves us. The Lord God forgives us. The Lord God saves us. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Will you please continue in prayer with me this morning? Gracious Lord God, Hear our prayer as our hearts call out to you. We give thanks to you for the many things that you have done and you continue to do for us. You amaze us. You astound us. Among our many praises, we give you thanks for the gift of life, your Son, Jesus Christ the gift of thy Holy Spirit. Thank you for the many prayers that you continue to answer and those you have answered. And Lord, we even give you thanks for the unanswered prayers and your wisdom you know what is best for us. Thank you for family. Family that is not just by blood, but also the blood of Christ, and whom we have joy in our hearts to be part of. Lead us also through times of trials. You know us intimately. You know our hearts. You know our souls. You know those things that weigh on us. Help us through those times. The times of suffering and pain of body, mind, and soul. Times of challenges when we struggle. Tired times, dark places. Help us to continually call to you. Even when we find ourselves walking through the valley of the shadow of even death. We find joy that you are our God. We pray for those who seem to feel as life is not worth living. For those who seem to find no peace. For those who have become chained to their pasts and who they were. We ask that you release them from these worries and pains, Lord God, in your grace. And fill us with your joy and peace and hope. As we bring these things and all others that are also upon our hearts, we pray the prayer that your Son taught us as we pray in one voice. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As a reconciled people before God, let us now worship with the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Choir, what child is this? Page 219.
richly and we return a portion back to you and your kingdom. Lord, we ask that you use them in your will and in your way. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This morning, our hymn of meditation can be found on page 217 as we join our voices for a Thanks be to God. I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke this morning, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. And this takes place after Mary has gone to Elizabeth's house, and the child within her womb, Elizabeth, leaps for joy and 
and Mary is filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is called um, the Magnificat, and it's also the Song of Mary. So if you will uh, follow along with me. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me and his holy name. His mercy is for all those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel and remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the word of God for us who are the people of God. Thanks, Thanks, to, God. Thanks to God and to you. Throughout the whole Bible, God's working his will is done through some very surprising individuals. Amen? I, uh, as a child, when I would go to a vacation Bible school, they often used the Old Testament for an example of God working through surprising people. David was handsome, as the scripture says, but he was also small compared to the giant Goliath. But he, knowing that Goliath was challenging the people of God, had faith that God would see him through to triumph, standing up against him. And after that, God is even more faithful as he becomes the king. And even when he made the mistake with Bathsheba, yes, it cost King David dearly. But God was still faithful. He was a penitent man. Noah, by no means, was a perfect man. I just love he got drunk right after the, the seas dried up and they got drunk. God still worked through him. Jacob. Joseph, Ruth, Joshua, Naomi, and there's just so many of them, and time and time God calls, and then he leads and directs their steps, and God's will is done through these imperfect vessels. Mary, a young, betrothed, Humbled in spirit, faithful to God, joins the list in our New Testament reading. And I have to say, it surprises me. Even now, as, as many of the years I have heard the Christmas story and this moment, I still am amazed at God's choice. Many of the Jewish believers of this time who were waiting for the promise of God to come to fruition, there we go, thought that it would be someone who was rich, who was well connected, and of course, a royal family. <coughs> but what happened was the complete opposite. We may ask, how in the world could God come to take what he had promised to happen if not these things were met? How would he set it 
liberty those who were suffering? How could he set at release the oppressive regime of the Roman Empire? How could he come bring water to a desert where there had been no rain? How did God keep God's word? How could he do this? And the answer is, never the way you think it will be answered. Unexpectedly. Mary and her future husband had no wealth. They were poor. They couldn't put this type of thing in the bank. They had no means. They, they were not connected with the right people. They didn't even have a room to stay in in Bethlehem. They were in what we call in modern tongue a bunch of nobodies. After all, a, a people of position and clout would never be seen or caught dead living in a stable. Amen? If we just stay right here for a moment, if we just pause, if we don't rush to the, the other end of this, because we know what is coming after we've heard it so many times, if we stop in this moment and ask God a simple question, why them? Why her? When we go to the scriptures with this question, God gives this answer. God calls each one of us. There is not nobody on earth that God does not have a purpose for. Make no mistake, each and every one of us here in this room or out there in that world have a calling. First Corinthians says it's like this. There are different kinds of gifts. But they are all given to believers by the same Spirit. There are different ways to serve, but they all come from the same Lord. There are different ways the Spirit works, but the same God is working in all these ways and in all people. We are all called, each one of us, with a different gift that at times changes as we change. As we mature and, and we go through different experiences, God uses these moments to preach, to teach others. We can't all be good at one thing. We can't all be called to one thing. I, I've heard many of you and that say some comments and last Sunday, one of you came up to me and said, Man, I wish I could sing as good as Molly and Janet and Cameron and, and Christina. They sound so beautiful up there. I've heard many of you say, I wish I was talented enough to do what Julie does. She, she handles everything with just good energy and she seems to always be pumped up. I, I wish I could be like that. I've heard some people say, man, I wish I had the strength and the good disposition that Molly seems to have in every situation that comes her way. If you could all, at any moment, snap your fingers and have your dearest desires granted, it would be a mistake. First, Corinthians says this. There is one body, but there are many parts. We can't all be the thumb. We can't all be the eyes. We can't all be the brain. There's just no way. We are all part of a body. But all the many parts make up one body. It is the same with Christ. We are all baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so we are formed into one body. It doesn't matter. This is the best part. It doesn't matter whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, even if you are a slave or you are a free person, we are all given the same spirit to drink. So the body is not made of just one part. It has many parts. So it doesn't matter whether you are a male or a female, if you're rich or poor, if you've got such a good social standing. It doesn't even matter how good your tax 
practice. All the Lord does require is a penitent heart and a willing soul. And that is what the Lord our God saw in Mary's life. And that is all the Lord needs in accomplishing his will and his way. Mary was willing. Now I'm going to say this one more time, and I'll probably say it again at some point in time. But I love a Christmas carol. I really do. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies, but I'm a little biased to the George C. Scott version. I just love that rendition. And, and in fact, I'm going to make a, an admission here, and y'all may laugh, but every night when we go to bed, we watch a Christmas carol every night. I go to sleep to a Christmas carol, and sometimes I will wake up at different times in the movie, and as I'm going back to sleep, I will picture what is happening on that display because I've seen it so many times, and yet it never grows old to me. My favorite part is the very ending. I absolutely love the way he wakes up to find that, oh, it's Christmas Day, and he's so different. He's so changed. I can't help find myself smiling with the joy that I see him on screen and how he abruptly changes from this man of, of Bob Humbug to love and gentleness. And, and not only does he change from the, if you've noticed as many times as I have, he wears black all the time. But he wears a, a red vest and a frilly little collar thing, a little bow tie. It's a, it's a signification to everybody around them that not only has his insides, his heart, and his soul changed, but he's even changing the outside of who he is. I love that. And my favorite part is him jumping on the bed. <laughs> And to all, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And he falls back into bed. It, it reminds me of the joy you feel as children that we often forget as one grows older. But always what changes is not only the joy but the fact that because he changed, because he is a changed man, time to him does not die. I love the joy, the second chance, a new life every day. He lives in thankfulness. Mary goes on to express how she feels in our scripture. And one thing that I always say every year is missing is a list of questions. She doesn't ask how it's going to work. She doesn't do what I would do. I would have to ask many, 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 many questions, and then I would have to plan it to death because that's who I am. But she doesn't do that. She has faith. That if God has indeed called her for such a time as this, that God will see her through. She walks with real joy. Not the kind of joy that you will find in an Amazon box. Not a joy you will find in any shopping mall that you can wrap and put pretty bows on and put it under the tree. It is a joy that goes beyond understanding. She believes in this joy, the joy that we also have, brothers and sisters, a joy that while we are mourning the loss of others, as the tears fall down our face, we have joy in our hearts because we know as believers we will see them again. It is the same joy we call on when our health begins to fade. But God calls us in every stage of our life that we still have purpose no matter if you now 
are not who you used to be. It is a God who calls us, pleads with us to hold on to joy in Christ. When everything used to make sense, only to find out it doesn't make sense anymore. It is a real joy to believe that nothing, not one thing that can happen is going to catch God by surprise. God already knew it was there, knew it was coming, and already has a plan of how it is to go after. Every moment, God is working for God's purpose, God's will, and God's good. And it is this joy, brothers and sisters, that Mary called upon time after time after time. See, I know what it feels like to hear these words and know them, but yet when it happens to you, it is hard to hard to call them in the moment. This morning, God, God has a sense of humor. I had gotten up, had everything set, I knew exactly where everything was, had laid out everything, and was ready when I laid my head down last night. And when I got up, I could not find anything that I had laid out. I couldn't find the keys. I kept dropping stuff. And the best part ever was right when I got to the door, I refused my husband's help because I'm an independent, strong woman. I had wrapping paper in this arm, my pocketbook in a bag in this, and my pocketbook falls to the floor. And everybody knows my pocketbook. It has everything in it. And I just sit there for a moment, and I can hear the anger and the frustration going through my veins and I'm mad as fire and I'm slamming stuff around and I'm like, come on, I'm running late already. I get to the car and I can't open the door because I don't have the keys. <laughs> and as I go back inside and find those keys and shove everything back in my purse and get everything in the car, I go to open the door and the Lord says, I want you to remember the way you feel right now. It was such an audible voice that I literally paused. He said, I want you to share with them how you feel right now because that's how they feel every day. And it's so hard when you're in the midst of the battle to recall the words of joy. It's so hard when you're frustrated and hurting when you can't remember, when, when, when the groceries are three times as much as they used to be and the bills go up and everybody wants a piece of you, and it's hard to recall the words of peace, the words of joy. I started laughing. In fact, I laughed so hard and long that my husband came to the door and said, Are you okay? <laughs> you see, God spoke in my heart and said, Joy is a choice. Instead of choosing joy this morning, I chose to feed the anger monster and the frustration monster that Satan is always trying to get me to feed. <clears throat> but the, I cut all that noise off real quick. And when I got in my car and I started naming the blessings, the yard sale, the fact that I was able to help a friend in need this weekend. The fact that Christmas is, is not about all these things that I'm trying to make them be about. It's about joy. I know that people thought I was crazy. I had my music turned up and I was praising God having church in my car because I chose joy. And that is the joy that Mary held to as she looked into the eyes of her fiancé and said, I'm pregnant with God's son. Think about that for just a moment. It is the joy that Mary called upon when she married Joseph among the whispers of her own family, her own friends, the knowing glances 
of a little baby bone began to show. It is the same joy she held to when Joseph said, Mary, we got to go to Bethlehem. Now, I'm, I have went pregnant not too long ago, and I don't even want to travel to Bethlehem by car. But yet Mary chose joy. It was also the joy that she held on to as she was told, we don't have no room for you here, but we got one in a smelly stable. That she called home. It was also this joy, brothers and sisters, that she held to when she felt the first known signs of labor. She chose joy. Now this morning I did not win that battle. The Lord was good enough to show me that. But he also reminded me I had been lost the war. Choose joy. And now we get to sing about joy. Page 89, please stand as you're able as we sing Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Amen. Go in peace, brothers and sisters.